Welcome to the news that's brought to you on the Anglican Cable Network Nigeria, ACN and Television. I am Ngozi Adibe. The federal government of Nigeria has been commended for their concern for workers, especially with the move to review the minimum wage. This commendation came from the Standing Committee meeting of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion held at the Cathedral Church of St. Barnabas. Saboki in Loring Kwara State. The Primate of All Nigeria Anglican Communion, the Most Reverend Nicholas Soko, in his address said that the realities of the present day Nigeria have made reviewing the minimum wage a necessity. He stressed that when the policy of 18,000 naira minimum wage came, pump price of premium motor spirit was 65 naira. But now the same petrol price has made an astronomical hike of about 123% in the rate of 145 naira per liter as a result salaries can virtually do nothing for families with the hike in the price of petrol came increase in the cost of living generally but minimum wage has remained 18,000 naira as a result the salary that could solve effectively all family issues before can do virtually nothing today the government should do the need for and quickly as well. Reacting to the current fuel scarcity rocking the entire nation, the standing committee feared that the hopes of Nigerians that the increase in fuel price to 145 naira per litre will automatically reduce subsidies and eliminate cabals and even scarcity have been dashed. He reminded the federal government that Nigerians deserve better and returning to long queues at the fuel stations, urging the government to use the funds saved from subsidy removal to get the refineries working again. In preparation for the 2019 general elections, he called on politicians to work harder to deliver on their previous campaign promises, stressing that Nigerians are still yearning for the dividends of democracy, not another round of empty promises. He also urged INEC to work harder to make registration of voters as smooth as possible and called on eligible citizens to get registered ahead of the general elections. The Primate of All Nigeria and the Archbishop Metropolitan, His Grace the Most Reverend Nicholas Dioko, has said that evil has laid siege on Nigeria, constituting insecurity and a kind of widespread fear that has never been felt before explaining that the policy is becoming increasingly volatile with no end in sight. The Primate made this assertion during his opening address presented at the 2018 Standing Committee of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion held at the Cathedral Church of St. Barnabas, Saboki, in Loring, Kwara State. The chairman of the Global Anglican Future Conference, Gafcon, pleaded with Nigerians to embark on serious prayers in order to ensure lasting peace as militancy such as terrorism, armed robbery, kidnapping, human trafficking and other vices have found their roots in every part of the country. The primate also said that the carnage inflicted by armed herdsmen in recent times in the country on unarmed and innocent citizens have reached an alarming stage. On the issue of establishing Katu colony, the primate announced that the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion does not support the move as it seems to treat some set of people with unwarranted special preference. Pramitoko said that cattle rearing, just like most other businesses in Nigeria, is individually owned by persons who don't even share their proceeds with the host communities or the government, and so should not be treated as a common venture. The Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion has denied media reports alleging that some bishops we are financially induced to elect the Bishop of Oshun Northeast, the Right Reverend Humphrey Olumakae, for translation to Lagos Diocese. The clarification was contained in a statement made available to journalists by the Church's Episcopal Secretary, the Right Reverend David Onoha. Bishop Onoha explained that an election was held on February 6, based on the constitution of the Church, after the concerned diocese had preferred the transition of the Bishop from another diocese to the consecration of a new bishop. He said after due nominations, the election was held between the Right Reverend Humphrey, Luma Kaye, and the Most Reverend Michael Fakwe. Ono has said the voting was by secret ballot 
and Bishop Olumakaye polled 109 against FAPE's 51 to emerge the winner. He said it was therefore uncharitable to attempt to smear the image of the church's primates, the most Reverend Nicholas Oko, instead of thanking God for the numerous blessings he has granted the church since the deception of Oko's administration. The right Reverend Humphrey Olumakaye is to take over from the retiring most Reverend Adebola Demowo as the Bishop of Lagos. Following the recent fracas in the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion, which arose after the election of the new bishop for the Diocese of Lagos, the Bishop of Jos Diocese, the Most Reverend Benjamin Kwashi, has expressed deep concern and surprise upon hearing the allegations that emanated from the media through one Mr. Ade Dohati, a lay member of a Lagos congregation. Mr. Ade Dohati had alleged that the outgoing Bishop of Lagos the Most Reverend Adebola Demo has colluded with the Primate of Nigeria, the Most Reverend Nicholas Oko, to ensure the election of Bishop Olumakai. He also alleged that huge sums of money exchanged hands in order to facilitate the process. However, according to the Most Reverend Benjamin Kwashi, the elections passed off without rancor in the House of Bishops, and they all dispersed in good spirits. Also, according to the Archbishop, the issue must have arisen through troublemakers in the Diocese of Lagos who had a candidate in mind because this often happens when there are disgruntled elements within the church. Meanwhile, some representatives of the Diocese of Lagos paid a courtesy call to the incoming Bishop of Lagos Diocese, the Right Reverend Dr. and Professor Mrs. Olumakaye, on Monday, 19th of February 2018 at Oshun Northeast Diocese and Headquarters in Oshun State to express their support and willingness to accept the new bishop. The Diocese of Lagos, Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion, has written a letter of acceptance to the Primate of all Nigeria, the Most Reverend Nicholas Dioko. The letter, which was written by the Diocese and released to newsmen, stated that the Diocese is very much pleased with the Primate and the entire Church of Nigeria for the announced election and translation of the Right Reverend Dr. Humphrey Olumakae from Oshun Northeast Diocese to Lagos Diocese. Bishop Olumakaye, who is currently the Bishop of Oshun Northeast, is one of the bishops translated from his diocese to another diocese at the Standing Committee held earlier this month in Ilori Kwara State. The diocese further stated that they look forward to seeing the new bishop build upon the legacies of which the current administration, the entire Anglican Church in Nigeria and worldwide, had through the ages been known and respected. Still to come, Archbishop Chukuma speaks up against Katu Colony. Please stay with us. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Diocese of Abuja, Church of Nigeria, invites you to 2018 The Way of the Cross program. Theme, Christ, our ransom and redeemer. Date, Monday 26th February to Sunday 4th March 2018. A week of transformation, exposition and ministration at the Cathedral Church of the Advent, Life Camp, Guarimpa, Abuja at 5 p.m. Delhi. Ministering, the Most Reverend Benjamin Kwashi, the Right Reverend Ephraim Ikako, the Right Reverend Tunde Adeleye, the Right Reverend Olumu Yua Ajayi, the Right Reverend Professor Dakbo Asaju, Venerable Professor Onuche and Venerable Professor Udobata Onuwa. There will be counseling and special prayers by gifted servants of God on daily basis. Host, the Most Reverend Nicholas D. Oko, Primate, Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion. In the cross, in Come and experience victory through the cross. In the cross. God is simply living according to the word of God. Pleasing God entails you staying with your wife in understanding according to the scripture and exactly. not in beating her.
Welcome back. If you just joined us, this is the news on the Anglican Cable Network Nigeria, ACNN Television. For more on our top stories, please visit our website at acnntv.com or youtube.com slash acnntv. To be up to date with our news and other programs, download the ACNN app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from their respective stores. Bishop of the Ecclesiastical Province of Enugu, Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion, the Most Reverend Dr. Emmanuel Chukuma, has said no Southeast governor will be allowed to give land to terrorists in any guise. He anchored his claim on the fact that headsmen were worse than separatist group, the indigenous people of Biafra, adding that the move was aimed at Islamizing Nigeria. Addressing reporters at the Cathedral Church of the Good Shepherd in Enugu, the clergyman said headsmen were armed dangerous and as such are a threat to farmers. According to Archbishop Chukuma, they cannot have colony for terrorists, people that are dangerous who have guns and other dangerous equipment for killing and maiming people because farming will become difficult. The Archbishop said cattle colony is another agenda for Islamizing Nigeria. He therefore urged the people to forget about whatever the current administration is saying. He further called on governors in South East not to accept any colony for any cattle rearer because they have become dangerous, adding that they are worse than IPOB, hence they should be described as a terrorist group. Members of the House of Representatives at Tuesday Plenary adopted a motion preferring the establishment of ranches for Fulani headsmen to the proposed cattle colonies. To realize the objective, the members urged the federal government to work out modalities of the establishment with states interested in ranches. The members also urged the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Natural Resources to liaise with state ministries of agriculture to speedily educate and encourage the herdsmen on the benefits of ranching, while mandating its committee on agriculture production and services to ensure its implementation. Benue State Governor Samuel Otom has assured the Nigerian army that his people would cooperate with his troops sent to the state for the Operation Cat Race. Recall that the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tuku Burutai, launched the exercise with the aim of bringing under control the endless herders farmers crisis and other security challenges. Speaking during the exercise, the governor commended President Buhari for his intervention and response to the plight of Benue people. The rules are very clear, as uh, you know, explained in uh, that document. So I don't expect any officer or soldier not to, you know, engage to bring any situation to proper control. You know, uh, troops have to be very decisive, and anyone that is found, you know, not to follow that rule, he also be charged accordingly. I have confidence that uh, Mr. President's approval of uh, the Chief of Army Staff with his team to come to Benue, another state in the North Central Zone, will restore peace for our people and our people will return home. So I'm sure that criminals will have to flee as uh, the cut is here. The Nigeria Police Force has disclosed that it has lost nine of its men since the beginning of its operation to end the herdsmen farmers clash clashes in Benue and Nasarawa states. Deputy Inspector General of Police Shoshak Habila disclosed this to newsmen at the Benue State Police Command Headquarters. He said 17 suspects were arrested in connection with the January 31, 2018 Boko mayhem and the murder of policemen in the two states. Joshak said the Inspector General of Police deployed 15 units of police mobile force, special forces who were trained in special ways outside the country. The intelligence platform and monitoring units of the Inspector General of Police were deployed in the state. Meanwhile, the Yobe State Police Command has confirmed the abduction of three men by Boko Haram after an attack on a public school in Yobe State. Senator representing Bauchi Central, Issa Misao, has accused the Nigerian army of playing politics with security issues in the country. Misao spoke while contributing to the debate sponsored by Tijani Kaura, Senator representing Zamfara North, on the recent killings in Zumi area of the state. 
The lawmaker wondered why Boko Haram insurgents carry out attacks after the army claims to have defeated them. He said the president should not mix politics with security, explaining that what the army is doing is politics because according to him, the army comes out to say they have defeated Boko Haram and the next day Boko Haram goes and kills people to prove a point. He pointed out that the army coming out to say they have Boko Haram is risking the lives of the people and therefore they should stop coming out to say that they have defeated Boko Haram because it is not necessary, adding that if Boko Haram is defeated, everyone will know. Misao also lamented inadequate security personnel and poor equipping of the military. A federal high court sitting in Lagos has dismissed the corruption charges against Chimaroki Namani, a former governor of Enugu State. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission had accused Namani of laundering 4.5 billion naira while in office between 1999 and 2007. He was to be rearranged before the court on Tuesday after he was first arraigned in 2007. During the hearing, Ricky Tafa Namani's counsel informed the court of an application he had filed disclosing the result of the plea agreement, which according to him led to the institution and determination of the charges against the defendant in July 2015. The lawyer said in view of the plea bargain agreement entered into by parties, there is no longer any valid charge pending before the court as Chuka Obiozo, the judge could not sit on an appeal of the previous one. The ESCC prosecutor Kelvin Uzozie said after looking at the affidavits filed by the defendant, he is of the view that the entire proceedings should be expunged to enable the prosecution to file fresh charges against the defendant. In his ruling, Obiozo held that in view of the plea bargain judgment of the court delivered on the 7th of July 2015, there is no valid charge before his court. Nigeria's former Minister of Finance, Dr. Ngozi Okonjo-Iwala, has been appointed into a high-level group on governance of the Commonwealth Secretariat. Professor Ben Maloney, Communications Officer, Commonwealth Secretariat, said in a statement that the high-level group will make recommendations on governance of the Commonwealth Secretariat. He said that the last summit in Malta, Commonwealth Heads of, the, of Government, directed the Secretary General to form the group. Professor Ben said the process is open and the high-level group reports to the heads. The group is chaired by Anote Tong, former president of Kiribati from 2003 to 2016. Okonjo Iwala, the coordinating minister of the economy during the administration of former president Goodluck Jonathan, is among the seven-member group. Others include Lord Howell, former British Energy Secretary Louis Frechette, former UN Deputy Secretary General, and Robert Hill, former Australian Defence Minister, Dame Miller, former Deputy Prime Minister of Barbados, and Dr George Vela, former Foreign Minister of Malta, are also members of the group. And on the foreign scene, Anglican provinces around the world have responded positively to Pope Francis' call for an ecumenical day of prayer and fasting for peace, with a particular focus on South Sudan and the Democratic Republic of Congo. The Pope made this call during his traditional Angelus address to crowds in St. Peter's Square in the Vatican. The call was endorsed that week by a number of senior Anglicans, including the acting primate of the Anglican Church of South Sudan, chair of the Anglican Consultative Council, the Secretary General of the Anglican Communion, and the Deputy Director of the Anglican Centre in Rome. In the days that followed, a number of other senior Anglicans around the world responded to the Pope's call, including at Bishop Masimango Katanga Zakari, the Primate of the Anglican Church of Congo. At Bishop Masimango expressed happiness at the Pope's initiative and told the Anglican Communion News Service that the bishops in the province would be encouraging their churches to take part. Bishops from the U.S.-based Episcopal Church are arranging for services of lamentation at churches around the country in the wake of the shooting at a Florida high school that left 17 students and faculty members dead. Also, the bishops and other church leaders are calling for political action against gun violence to end these lesser 
spasms of violence in the country. A former student, 19-year-old Nicholas Cruz, has been charged with 17 counts of murder after authorities say he opened fire with an AR-15 rifle in hallways and classrooms before ditching his gun and ammunition and blending in with students to escape. He was found and arrested on a city street later in the day. 14 of the fatal victims were students. A football coach, athletic director and geography teacher were also killed. The Diocese of Southeast Florida, which includes Parkland and Coral Springs, also released a statement expressing grief at the horrific massacre of innocent children. And so that's it on the news as brought to you by the Anglican Cable Network Nigeria, ACNN Television. I am Ngozi Adiyibe. Thank you very much for watching and God bless you.